You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Monday, March 27th, 2023. Now, this week, we are going to be continuing to speak about the Mass. If you remember, in the previous weeks, we've already talked about the introductory rites, the readings, the homily, the profession of faith, the prayers of the faithful, the offertory. And so, this is a very big and important week because we are going to be talking about the Eucharistic prayer. The prayer said by the priest, which the congregation joins in, during which God transforms bread and wine into the true presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. So it's a big week, and I feel completely inadequate as we set out to do this. And yet we're going to try. So to put ourselves in the right attitude, I would really appreciate you joining me in praying the surrender prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have in call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours to do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. So before we dive into the actual parts of the Eucharistic prayer, which we're going to start tomorrow, we're going to do a little bit of history today. So there are some things I really want you to hold on to, and there's other things I kind of want you to understand. So the things to hold on to, number one, is that the Eucharistic prayer, and you probably notice this on your own, we are saying, or the priest is saying, and we are joining him prayerfully in saying the very words that Jesus said at the Last Supper, when he took ordinary bread and wine, and for the very first time transformed them into his body and blood. And of course, after that, he commanded us all to do this in memory of him. Therefore, from the very beginning, from the very earliest moments of the Christian church, Mass has been being said, and these words have been included in the Eucharistic prayer. In fact, from the very beginning also, the Eucharistic prayer has also included prayers for the church. It has included intercession of the saints, the remembrance of the dead, prayers for the church leaders. All of these things are timeless. They're from the very beginning. Now, there are a few things that have changed in the church over the years. And one of those is the understanding of how the lay people in the pews, you and me, non-priests, what our role is in the Mass. And for a long time, it was... It was really misunderstood. And so there's a lot of factors that go into this. So I'm going to give you the very quick version. So starting in the 300s, when Christianity was no longer illegal, all mass was said in Latin. And it was said in Latin, not to be fancy, but because that was the language that everyone spoke. Everyone spoke Latin. So mass was said in Latin. But then over the centuries that changed, the church reached to further places And Latin fell out of use, but still the Mass was said in Latin. And that is a good and holy thing, and that's a whole different topic. But as that happened, the people in the pews oftentimes didn't understand what was happening at Mass. And this was not only due to the language, but also due to the fact that people couldn't read. People weren't receiving any sort of religious education at all. There was a lot of ignorance. And so what happened is that people didn't understand the lay person's role in what was happening on the altar. And for a while, actually, in history, people would run from church to church. You know, I haven't always been in churches where this happens, but very often when the priest elevates the sacred host or elevates the the blessed cup, 
the server will ring bells. And so that moment is the elevation that this has been transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And people would run from churches to churches, hoping to arrive just for that moment, just this most amazing moment, just kind of like going from one place to another, seeing the best part of a movie and nothing else. Time went on and slowly education improved. And what our church really asks us to understand now is that, yeah, the priest plays a very important role at the Mass. He stands in the place of Christ. God works directly through him. But lay people also play an important role. This was an important question and issue that the church dealt with during the Second Vatican Council, which took place about 50 years ago. And in that council, they issued special documents that really tell us as a lay people that when we are at Mass, we are not strangers, we are not silent spectators, but instead that we should take part in the sacred action that is happening at Mass, and that we should be aware of what is happening, to enter into full devotion and even collaboration with what is happening. And that's what we're going to be talking about this week, how important our response is, but even more so how important it is that we don't just see the sacrifice offered to God as that little bit of bread and that little bit of wine. But when the priest asks us to lay our sacrifice on the altar, that it is our opportunity to lay our entire selves there before God, the good things in our life, the hard things in our lives our future, our past, it all. So we, even though we're not priests, maybe you are a priest, maybe you'll be a priest in the future, but even in this moment, you play a very important role in Mass and even in that Eucharistic prayer. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more thing. A deep, deep thank you to all of the families that have decided to prepare for the consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, along with my family. So what we're doing right now. I am just so excited for you and for the step that you are making as a family to really entrust who you are, your future, your hopes, everything into the infinite love of Jesus communicated through his heart. So if you are still interested in joining us in the 33 days of preparation leading up to consecration, and remember, there's no timeline, there's no pressure to be done at a certain point. Jesus is happy to have you whenever you are ready. We do have consecration books left that we would love to share with you. They're only $15. It's a beautiful hardcover book with a ribbon. And I just poured my heart into this in the hope that any family ready to give themselves to Jesus would join us and make that move. Because I've heard from so many families that did this a generation ago, that consecrating themselves to the sacred heart of Jesus was the thing that defined their families, that changed them. And that just really allowed them to embrace holiness. I hope that that's the story I'm sharing about our family in a generation. And I hope that's the same for you. So check the notes for this podcast episode and grab your copy. And I'm so excited for you to join us in this journey of a lifetime. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.